Everything is all good with the stream before I keep going here with the go goodness. Yeah, we're good. All right. Welcome, everybody. Oh, let me switch my screen there. Close some stuff up. There we go. Forgot all this. There we go. There we go. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. And boom. All right. We don't need setup either. All right. What is up, everybody? So I was on uh, Eric's stream yesterday. Uh, we were doing some ghost stuff. Uh, I'm going to keep doing some ghost stuff today. And uh, so, yeah, yesterday I promised to do stuff on the Echo web server. Um, so like building REST APIs, building websites, all that good stuff using Echo. So Echo is here. Echo.labstack. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Echo.labstack.com. Um, it's like an HTTP server. They call it high performance extensible minimalist Go web framework. Um, so a secret is every Go web server or, or I guess Go web framework uh, out there. Uh, let me switch. Actually, there we go. Yeah. Forgot to put it on my desktop. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here, like we see at echo.labstack.com, every web framework in Go, <laughs> I think it all says like high performance. Uh, and they always have like benchmarks and, and stuff like that. Um, I mean, let's be honest, like pretty much unless you're doing something crazy, like you're Google and you're handling like a billion requests per second or whatever, it's not that big a deal. Like you're going to be performant enough. Um, so like, I like this because it's like an easy API for me. Uh, it's like an extensible deal going on. Um, you can like add new stuff, like whatever stuff you want to add. It's, it's kind of like easier that way, um, to deal with like, oh, I want to add a different templating language cause I'm building an HTML, like a, like a front end web app. Uh, or I don't know, like I want to deal with auth in a different way, something like that. Um, so that's what I mean by extensible. That's the kind of thing that I like. Like I like to see that my, just my ability to start off with something pretty basic, pretty simple, pretty easy to get started with, but I can grow later. I can like grow up, uh, to having something complicated. And then this minimalist part to me is more like, uh, it's just like easy to get started with basically like a, an API that I can just kind of, uh, I can pick it up. Like I can read about it. And if I know enough Go, then I can kind of get started with it before having to read like a novel, <laughs> like a novel of, of uh, like how to use this thing. So uh, heading down here today, we're going to try to use the router uh, and the router is you'll see what it means. It's how to say, you know, when a get request comes to slash index, whatever, uh, let's say it's slash index. Um, then I want to run this code when the, when the request comes into slash index, there's a bunch of other stuff here too, that, uh, we will, I will take advantage of, uh, but, but not upfront. Uh, so here's what I want to do today. I want to start a project, like a big project. I want to build a search engine. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to take on Google. I'm going to take over some of their, their market, market share here. Uh, Probably not. Uh, this is just kind of a hobby thing. I'm not trying to build a product, um, even though uh, taking on Google would be a, a kind of an interesting thing. Uh, we're not going to do that, but we are going to build a search engine. Um, so the first thing I want to do is um, I want to use an API for this. I'm not going to build like the entire backend for a search engine. Uh, that's that's more like I, I want to take over the world or something. So I found this API. Uh, I work for uh, Microsoft in the Azure group, but I actually didn't know that this is an actual thing uh, until like now. So like Bing web search is a thing. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, yeah, so I just got raided. So uh, Eric, welcome. Fasella, welcome. Isaiah, welcome. Yeah, you come to harass me. Uh, harass away. It's double A. Yeah. No, you're good, Isaiah. Double A R O N. Yeah. So uh, hit me with questions. Hit me with comments. Whatever you got. Um, I was just starting out. I'm gonna build a search engine today. We're gonna use Echo. I promised you yesterday, Isaiah. We're gonna use tons of Echo uh, to build web apps. So we're gonna use Echo today. Uh, we're gonna use Echo to no robo voice. That's right. I'm using my own mic, streaming directly to Twitch. 
Uh, me and Eric will figure that out too. We're going to stream again together today. I think I'm pretty sure we're going to stream together today. Uh, but if not today, then we will stream together again on go and probably other stuff. Uh, so yeah, robo voice on his stream only. So tune in for that. But yeah, today I'm streaming directly to Twitch instead of through OBS Ninja. So, uh, I got the mic. I'm good to go. Uh, yeah, so we're doing uh, Echo Framework. We're building a REST API, uh, but we're building a search engine. We're going to build like a REST API. We're going to have a JavaScript front end. We're going to use a framework called Svelte. Uh, me and Eric were talking about front ends yesterday. Uh, he mentioned Svelte. Um, so that's at svelte.dev. Uh, where did this name come from? I have no idea, uh, but I kind of like it. It's like I'm feeling Svelte today, you know, like I'm feeling handsome. Uh, not, I'm not feeling handsome today, but that's, that's another story. Um, so yeah, we're going to do a JavaScript front end. We're going to be talking to an API running echo, uh, and we're going to use the Bing web search API to build our web ser our, our search engine. Um, maybe when we go and take over the world later on, we're going to go and like build our actual crawler and index and all that crazy search engine stuff. Uh, but for now we're going to be calling an API. Um, so let me get started. I want to get started with the server. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about today, obviously, the web server. So uh, I'm going to go and create a repo first. Da, da, da. Let's just call it go search. Search engine in go. Uh, public repo. Rep uh, let's do a readme. Get ignore for go. Uh, I always like to use the MIT license. Um, I mean, someone told me that's a good license at work. Uh, I read about it. It seems like it's kind of got a fair use thing going on. Um, there's some other stuff that I liked at the time, but I don't remember. So, uh, yeah, that's that's basically why I like MIT. Hey, thanks for the subscribe, Isaiah. I appreciate that. Um, so I'm going to create it. <clears throat> then I'm going to clone it down to my machine. So we're going to do one of these, head down here, and I'm going to clone it, and then I'm going to CD into that, go search, start up my VS Code. Uh, for those who haven't seen my dev setup, this is uh, Windows 10 and WSL2. Uh, I'm a big fan of WSL2. There we go. We're going to close that down there. Uh, big fan of WSL2 because I can have Windows, um, and I pretty familiar with windows ish. Um, so I can have windows and, uh, also I can have Linux. So yeah, I see you got to get the founder badge. I, I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. Um, so anyway, still, thank you. I, I appreciate it too. I appreciate you subscribing to me. So yeah, um, we got, uh, yeah, we got Linux on windows. I kind of like that. I'm familiar with Linux. I used a Mac before windows. Mac was kind of linksy. So you know, we got that going on too. Uh, yeah, Spiel program. Is it Spiel program mirror? Is that a German? Is that a German name? A German term? I know Spiel is for games. I also know that my username is a bad word in German. So yeah, so uh, just ignore that if, if you do speak German. So yeah, I, I do wonder if someone figured out how to make money uh, with such a thing. Um, I actually, I actually like, aside from the obvious, uh, I actually am not sure if Bing charges you. I work for Microsoft, so I'm hoping I can get some free action for this little demo hobby app, but uh, we'll, we'll see. So Dune Architect, uh, no crystal today. I was too tempted to uh, write some Go today after doing the stream with uh, Eric.dev, uh, my coworker Eric. We were talking about Go yesterday. Uh, so we talked about building web apps uh, using Go. So I'm using this Echo framework. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, Eric says should be free. So that's cool. We got a free web API. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, you know, fast forward a year to, no, fast forward five years, should be a programmer. Uh, you, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have a full search engine. We're gonna do, uh, web, uh, we're gonna do ads. We're gonna do all kinds of great stuff. We're gonna be bigger than Google. Just you and uh, me and all of you guys, all, all of you folks. So yeah, S2Pac, Echo Echo, I got you, I got you. Uh, why aren't Eric's chats showing up in the stream chat? That I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Let me open up my uh, my OBS here. 
put some secrets action in so you don't see my setup. Um, I don't want to give away my secrets here. Just kidding. We're going to do a screen share. Uh, oh, is my chat box messed up? Oh, no. Let's see here. What is up? Chatter. Chat bots. I don't want to hide that. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, duh, duh, duh. What am I doing? Oh, we got some coming in now. Maybe. Uh, let me just pause on that. I want to go. To, I want to talk to y'all in the chat. Uh, I think Eric has some. Uh, I think Azure has some free demo accounts as well. Hey, Spiel programmer, thanks for the follow. Uh, S. Tupac, Kinnerick, Ganta, and uh, yeah, all of you. Thank you so much for the follow as well. I really appreciate that. Uh, Eric, we're going to be rich. We'll have all the data. That's right. I'm building a crawler. I'm going to spend millions of dollars on storage, uh, you know, so that we can be rich. Hopefully more than the amount we spend on storage. Uh, as Tupac, my company has lots of data, but it's inaccessible and dirty. Dirty? Like, what is dirty? I, I, do I want to know what dirty is? <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah, okay, Eric, you're on the chat. Isaiah, there he is. All good. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I uh, fixed that. Uh, that's, that's a win right there. I fixed something. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Um, let me head back to the terminal here. Uh, untidy. Oh, Isaiah, uh, hard to parse as Tupac untidy. Okay. That's a better term. <laughs> that's a better term. Yeah. I think I get it. Not dirty in the, the, where my mind went. I, I guess I have a dirty mind. Uh, Eric, uh, oh, Eric, I muted me. Uh oh, I was like STFU. I had enough of you yesterday. Hell no. Hell no. That was a fun stream yesterday. Let's do it again. Hopefully today. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to head into my repo in VS Code. Uh, Spiel Programmer, that's a porn site? No way. No way. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's Tupac. Uh, two, multiple systems in each one has slightly different translations for the same save fields. Oh, the same fields values. Oh yeah, I can see how translations are. Translations are a pain. I one time I had to do um, language translations and, and support right to left. So like you know like English and in the like the Western European and, and the Eastern European languages have left to right. But then um, like I think Arabic and Hebrew and maybe some others they go right to left. So all the UI stuff that we were doing just broke. Like. We may we just assumed everything was going to be on the left side. The text was going to read left to right, and now all of a sudden you got text reading right to left, and like it just was it was terrible. <laughs> it was like a nightmare. It was I still have nightmares about it. Uh, yeah, Eric, we're gonna keep the stream rolling. Follow up with some Twitch bot controlling my voice. That's gonna be fun. That is gonna be fun. <laughs> good, good luck finding what those translations mean. <laughs> Rocker Boo, welcome, welcome. Nice to see you. Snap the legend. You're the legend. I don't know about me. I All I have is a VS Code uh, window open with a bunch of empty crap. I've got a git ignore, a license, and a readme. So, uh, yeah, we're going yeah, to see if we can write some code today. Um, we'll see how good it is. You only saw Eric's code yesterday. You did not see mine. So, hey, get ready. Strap in. Um, yeah, if it doesn't crash. I hope that you're, uh, the... Uh, what did you get? You V is it VTS? Is that the Eric? Is that the name of the plugin? The OBS plugin? V VST. I got the acronym bro. Yeah. So if VST doesn't crash OBS on you, <laughs> that that would that would be fun too. That would be a fun uh, a fun uh, exercise too to crash VST or to crash OBS with VST. Yeah, plugin format that works in all kinds of audio programs. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm going to learn something uh, this afternoon with you, too. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, we're going to do a Go mod in it. So this is using Go modules. I don't remember if we used Go modules yesterday with Eric, with you. Um, I'm going to use Go modules. It's what I'm more familiar with these days. Um, there's a whole history behind dependencies in Go. Uh, like there was no dependencies, like a way to, dep to manage dependencies, I guess. Uh, for a while and then there was kind of one and then there was a little bit more advanced then there was even more advanced than that and now it's built into the go tool it's called go modules so i'm going to name it just the same as my github repo what did i name that what is it called yeah ar slash go search okay 
we got that going on. I'm gonna head back to VS Code. So yeah, yeah, we, we <laughs> Eric, we don't. We, I don't know if I'd call that code. Well, we got a go dot mod file. So that's. Can I get a half? Can I get a half of a code here? Maybe I'll take. I'll take a half of a code. I'm just taking it. Um. Yeah. Let me create a new file. And I'm gonna call it main.go. This is what I always call my my like first file. A rocker boot, no, my half code. <laughs> I don't so does that mean I don't get a half code? Or can I still get my half code? We're gonna we're about to write some real code, so maybe I'll just I'll cut that half out and we're gonna do this. There's my code right there. Package main. <laughs> Did I steal it? No. Well, kind of. I ran this. I mean, so this auto generated this file, so I guess I kind of stole it because the Go, the CLI tool kind of just did it for me. So speaking of half code, y'all ever seen the stack overflow question about applying CSF to half a character? No, I want to see what this is all about. Stack overflow CSS to half a character. This one, Isaiah. Is it possible to apply CSS to half a character? A way to style half a character, half the letter needs to be transparent. <laughs> we, Isaiah, that's it, yeah. Why I have currently searched for methods of styling, styling a part of a character with CSS or JS, applying CSS to half a character, uh, trying to obtain this. This looks like the Xamarin logo, kind of, I think. All right, I'm, I'm gonna do what I always do about when I look Stack Overflow, I'm gonna not read, I barely even read any of this. I usually basically read none. So it looks like, uh, yeah, so Isaiah, I guess he's trying to make this, this X, like one color on the left and then slightly lighter blue on the right. But he doesn't, or they don't wanna do an image. They wanna do uh, something generated dynamically. I guess that means either CSS or JS. <laughs> My city recently spent 250 grand 250 grand to define a new brand for itself. The logo they come up with is this. I bet they're in Halifax right there, Halifax, Canada. So they've got an A with half of the deal going on, another A and an X. Xanus could use lines. That'd be interesting. What do you mean by that? Lines like uh, on an image or you mean CSS like back, uh, like border lines, something like that. My goal is to come up with this website as a joke. Revolve secret brand generator. Do you do I even want to type something in here? What do I want to define? Golang. Oh. And these are actual are these actual characters? Ooh. Span class equals light. What okay. All right, I'm gonna do what I do on Stack Overflow always. I'm gonna just basically scroll down. So feel free to fork and improve. Pure CSS for a single character. JavaScript used for automation across text and multiple characters. What? JS Fiddle, let's see this. Let's see this and then get back to some Go. So I don't know what I'm doing with JavaScript or CSS. That's why I write Go. So I can I can pretend like I know that I'm doing something and I don't have to learn web tech. So this is gibberish to me. If anyone knows, if anyone knows how to use this stuff and what this means, hit me up. Like I need to learn. I want to learn. Isaiah, this is your whole job. What? So you you mean you can actually read like like this? Is this putting HTML into something else? It's because that's HTML. Is it like putting something into half style EL? Maybe? Half style EL, where are you? Var half style EL. Eric cut my teeth in web development. Okay. Nice. LMAO, oh, uh, oh, 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 Isaiah, you mean you pretend to know what you're doing too? Okay. It's kindred spirits then. Yeah, all right. All right, so and we've got some regex. I, I'm a good fan of regex. It, it burns my brain every time, so I like that. It kind of stretches me to do do better in, in programming. So, all right, so they did it. So they did it. So basically, if I ever do this, I'm gonna 
do another web search for Stack Overflow CSS to half a character, and I'll just end up back at this JS fiddle after clicking around, and then I will just copy all of this. And now that I know this exists, I'm gonna probably put this on my website. Maybe I'll put it on our search engine. <laughs> Eric, yeah, Eric, you too. You fake it till you make it. Isaiah, Isaiah, don't worry about it. I love it. I love a good tangent, especially when we end up with red and black XYZ A without images, because I'm even worse at graphic design than I am at JavaScript and CSS. So don't worry about it. I appreciate it. Keep them tangents coming. For now, until you until the next tangent, let's see some other go. Let's see some other go. So we got a main.go, package main. So there's my code. Um, I'm gonna make a funk main. So this is obviously, this is the entry point of all our go. Rocker boo, yeah. If you're gonna steal this code, steal away. Uh, beware, don't, probably don't, re uh, don't reference me in the go because, uh, or in the code because it's gonna be terrible. So uh, we're gonna write some terrible code. We're gonna like slowly refine it and make it a little bit better, a little bit better. Eric, what's the name of our search engine? Boogle, Bingle, or Ging? Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's a good question. Put it in the chat. Any other ideas? We got Boogle, Bingle, or Ging? No, not copyright, Air Schles. You're gonna, you're gonna get people asking, where is this Air Schles? And they're gonna get like pitchforks at my door. So uh, no, please no. Please no. <laughs> um, yeah. Bring back Jeeves. Yeah, maybe we can copyright Ask Jeeves, the, that, that logo. That'd be pretty cool. Alta Vista. All right. What was that other one? Dogpile. I wonder if Dogpile's still around. Is it? Do I even want to? I'm going to do a web search for Dogpile. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll Google it. Why not? Dogpile search. Just to see the irony of Googling, uh, searching for dog pile with the search engine that killed it. Or maybe it's not dead. Oh, wow. They still have the dog logo too. We got, yeah, all right. We got Jeeves. We got Alta Vista. We got Babelfish. <laughs> a spiel programmer in Germany. I might not have, I might have to name it AR underscore, underscore Schles. Okay. Okay. It's like uh, the F word, but in German. Why does the website look like it hasn't been updated in 14 years? I'm going to take a guess and say either it was built by someone like me who's terrible at all things front-end web development or it literally hasn't been updated in 14 years. Holdings copy, a.k.a. exploited. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right, what were we doing? What were we doing? Uh, go. Yeah. All right, so we got a funk main. Uh, here's where we pull in Echo. So I'm literally gonna do an import and I'm gonna head over to uh, the package.go.dev. So we saw this yesterday when it was me and Eric, we were uh, looking for docs. So I think we went to uh, godoc before. Uh, yeah, and it says it's there's a new destination, check out pkg.go.dev. So that's what I usually hit up. So I'm gonna hit up echo uh, Echo V4, I'm guessing that's the right one. But they have a versions tab. So let me, is it from uh, oldest to, yeah, oldest up to latest, V4. Okay, oh yeah, they even have code I'm gonna straight up copy, that's good. Uh, I would think the gopher would be a better search engine to rip off with Go, yeah? How about, oh, I wonder if we can do gopher search. Like, uh, go for search dot com nope it's taken we'll come up with something go for search dot com oh this is a this could maybe 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 yeah should i maybe i'll i'll make a note i'll actually register this uh later on tomorrow or whatever spiel programmer is it blasphemy no 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 I like C. I like C sharp too. I watch a. I watched a video like a talk. What was it like a couple days ago by, uh, who was it? Eric Meyer was he? I think he was one of the guys that created C sharp. Maybe anyway, he was talking about like all this language theory stuff, and it related somehow to ML and AI. He was saying like numbers were functional programmers or fun 
numbers were functional programming concept, which I didn't get. It was like called a ring. And then I just thought of like Gollum and that I zoned out. He's too smart for me. Like it was crazy, uh, crazy, crazy, intense talk. But yeah, yeah, Eric there, uh, Eric says there are a number of gophers at Microsoft. Yeah, um, there are. Uh, we write Go. We have a uh, Go SDK. Uh, it's a little sparse, but uh, it's grow ever growing. So yeah, we write some Go. Uh, there's Go that runs behind the scenes inside of Azure too. So uh, especially like like uh, Kubernetes, uh, we do some Docker stuff too. So it's all there. It is all there. Yeah. So let me straight up copy this code into my main file. I didn't even have to write that code that I wrote. But hey, we got what? Nine lines of code under our belt. And now we're going to steal 28 of them. We're going to replace our nine with 28. So boom. Yeah. Rockerboo copy and paste stream. That's right. Let us figure out what the hell is going on here. Well, first of all, um, the Go mod is supposed to have lab stack echo. So this thing, what is it saying? Yeah, it's not on your Go mod file. I'm going to fix that by making this a little bigger and then building my app. So it's just, it saw it, saw my imports and then just downloaded them. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, Rockerboo, yeah, just exactly like real life. That's for sure. So hey, Detleon, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically if I wasn't copying from the, the Golang site, I would just be copying from Stack Overflow anyway. So, I mean, let's just be honest. That's programming, right? <laughs> There's, there is even a, I wish I could find it. I remember where it was even. There was a, um, I think it was an XKCD. No, it was a, it was a YouTube. Uh, it was like on one side, it was like how programmers look in web or in, uh, in movies. And it was like the code streaming down the screen and like intense music and like 10 monitors. And then the other side was like how they really are. And it was like a person like in a dim office with like a bunch of books stacked up, swearing, going back and forth to Stack Overflow. That's life, right? That's just life. So yeah, we got, duh, 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 we're making a new Echo, all right? We're using some middleware. Let's just leave that where it is. Looks like we're gonna be doing some logging. So that's cool. Uh, I think recover means that we're not going to crash. So if something panics, panic is like the really, really intense version of an error in Go. So that's like uh, instead, like in Go, you can return an error like here, right there. And that's like the preferred way to do stuff. If you like, okay, I had a problem. I couldn't read the file or, or I couldn't read whatever, or you didn't pass in the right thing to this function. You return an error and then errors are values. Uh, so someone doesn't have to handle an exception. They can just check, okay, is this an error? If it is an error, then I'm going to handle it or maybe I'm going to ignore it. doesn't matter. depends on the function that they're calling. But there is a panic. Panic is like, I'm for real. Shit is fucked up. So like if you panic, then you're you're serious. So this thing right here is saying, all right, if someone panics, don't crash the server. Instead, log it out as a serious looking log message and then recover from the panic instead of just crashing. So a spiel programmer, here's a book about it. Not really. All right. Looks real to me. Let me open that up off screen. Let's see. Let's see. Copying and pasting from Stack Overflow. Yes, I love it. I love it. That's from the practical dev. That's dev.to, right? I thought I think that's dev.to. I love that site. I love writing and reading on that site. I spend like hours in the morning reading that stuff. Uh, all right, so we're gonna start our server on 13.13. All good, all good. Now we've got our get. So this is where, like I, I mentioned routes before. Uh, so we've got a get, this is saying, what are, we, what are we saying? Registers a new get route for a path with a matching handler in the router with optional route level middleware. What? So I'm going to just stick to the first part. Register a new get route for a path with a matching handler in the router. All right. So with a matching handler. Okay. I know what a handler is. We're going to head up here. This is a handler. So they all, if you're going to handle anything, any HTTP request, 
all the code that you want to run has to be this. So obviously you're going to write the real code and the function, but all the code that you want to use as a handler has got to be a function that looks exactly like this. You can name it whatever, but you got to have an echo dot context coming in and an error coming out. So if you're not familiar with functions and go, they start with func. So short for function, um, you name it, whatever you want. If you name it uppercase and you're inside of a package, then it's exported. It's like in JavaScript, it's like doing export function, whatever. So it's just uppercase exported, lowercase private. Um, Taking a parameter, name the parameter, whatever you want. So I'm gonna name it CTX. I like that, CTX. Uh, this is the type of the parameter, echo.context. So the type of a variable always comes after the variable name. Spiel program, it's as real as this book. What book are we talking about here? Exiting Vim eventually. I, I just closed the terminal tab, I'll be honest with you. I think there's, what it's like control, control escape, control W. I just exited the terminal tab. I think I remember how to save, so that's really all I need. Then just exit, just get out of there. Uh, spam escape. <laughs> spam? That's a Vim thing. Colon, colon, or colon Q, Q for quit. Okay, let's 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 see. I bet there's a stack over. I bet there's 20 million stack overflows for this. How to exit Vim? Yup, boom. It says type quit enter to quit Vim. Okay. Don't forget the colon. You should type colon quit and then hit the enter key. Also colon Q probably short for quit. Okay, you got to hit the escape key. That's right. I knew it was the escape key somewhere. You got to enter normal mode. I got to be normal to quit. That's not going to work. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm an abnormal person. Then you type command to hit command. You enter normal mode. Then you type colon to enter command line mode. Then a colon appears at the bottom of the screen. And then you can type in whatever you want. You got quit, quit without saving, write and quit. Write and quit, that sounds like the one for me. Write and quit, even if the file has read permission, if the file does not have write permission, then you force write. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bookmark of this in case I get stuck in Vim. I always get stuck in Vim if we have a new, uh, if I have a new machine and, and Git all the way, just, it just tries to jam me into Vim. It's a trick, yeah, Eric, we're not learning Vim, I swear. There's a Vim plugin for Visual Studio. I think if you know the commands, it can be very efficient. I really should learn the commands. It's just escape colon WQ. That can't be too hard to remember, but it might be for me. You'd be surprised. All right. Yes. All right. So we were doing handlers. Yeah. So type comes after the variable return type of the function comes after the function itself. Uh, well, the function declaration itself. And then I'm going to return a CTX dot string. So string will send a response to the client, the, per, the, yeah, the client of the server, uh, sends a string back. Status code is gonna be a 200 okay right there. And then we're gonna just send hello world back. Uh, CTX.string is gonna return an error probably if it has a problem sending the thing back to the client. Let's run this thing. We're gonna, uh, this, is, this is how we're gonna take over the world with a hello world server. So you can type a go run, go run builds it and then runs it, but it builds it in like a temp directory and then runs that. So that's different from when I did the actual go build that spit this thing out. What happens if I open a binary? Oh, VS code is smart. It's not going to try to open and, and display a bunch of binary. That's cool. All right. We're running the thing. Let's do a little curl. What port did we start it on? 1323. Curl localhost 1323. And then did I put a HTTP path? Nope. So just straight up the index. Hello world. All right. Let's get the greenbacks. We're start. I got to set up my, my company checking account so that I can uh, start making some cash with my hello world. All right. So echo logs it out too. That is what that is from the middleware right there. Middleware logger. So we're logging out everything, I guess. The time the request came in, 
the ID of the request. I'm not sure how to get that. We'll have to look that up later. Remote IP, that was me from localhost. The host, this is the HTTP host header that came in. Get method, okay. URI slash, that makes sense. User agent is curl, that is me. 200 okay status, makes sense. That's what I sent back, no error. Latency, 4,700. I think that's in nanoseconds. No, that can't be milliseconds. That would have been four seconds. I think that's probably nanoseconds. Uh, what is that then? That's four milliseconds. Latency human. Oh, wait, what is a mu? I think that's microsecond maybe. Let's check that out. Microsecond, okay. What is the difference? Microsecond is a thousand nanoseconds. Oh, wait, okay. So, all right, so eric.dev, this is microsecond. Then if that's microsecond, a nanosecond is smaller than a, a microsecond, right? Yeah, because a, a microsecond is a thousand nanoseconds, so it's gotta be smaller. So that means that if we're at four microseconds, then times a thousand is nanoseconds. So latency is in nanoseconds. Latency human is, oh, this has got to mean it's printing out the latency so that a human can read it. I'm a human. Perfect. 4.7 microseconds. Zero bytes coming in. I just did a curl to the path. Whatever. All good. Bytes out 13. That is that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13. Perfect. Uh, Spiel Programmer, it looks like you can even run and debug Go from within VS Code, maybe from Visual Studio too. I don't know about Visual Studio. I'm a bad Microsoft person. I don't use Visual Studio, but you can. You can do that. Uh, but I, Is there a way to do it like this? I don't think there is. Oh yeah, uh, add import. So I have a Go plugin. Let me back that up here. So if you search in VS Code for Go, the first thing that pops up is Go from the Go team at Google. So it's officially supported by the people who build Go. So I installed this. It installs a whole bucket of tools under the hood for you. Uh, one of them is called Go PLS, which stands for Go Please. Um, that is called, a, it's a language server. Uh, so a language server is Basically, it keeps track of like uh, what's called the AST of your program, uh, basically the structure of your program, and it enables VS uh, Visual VS Code and prop, maybe Visual Studio. I don't know for sure, but definitely VS Code. It enables it to do stuff like that, um, and also do autocomplete. It calls it IntelliSense. Um, yes, Rockerboo. It is the Go language server protocol. Uh, Eric.dev got you dropped some math on me here. So we got a million US, is that nanoseconds? A million US equals one second. That's a thousand times a thousand, okay. Uh, and then a thousand nanoseconds is one microsecond. A thousand microseconds is one millisecond. And then a thousand milliseconds is one second. I gotta, I gotta remember those, those prefixes. I know they're, they're, they're Greek, from, based on Greek or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, I, I remember Mila is a thousand. So it's a thousand of, a th one thousand of those is a second, but micro and nano. I'll just try to remember micro is, a, nano is super small, micro is kind of medium small, and then Mila is big small. I don't know, something like that. And then one second is big. But yeah, uh, yeah, go LSP, language server protocol. Um, so there are a bunch of language server protocols. I think it's under langserver.org. Yeah. So Sourcegraph started it. Uh, they're an awesome, pretty cool company. They are an awesome company, actually. I like I like the people behind it. And uh, they're basically trying to do Google for source code, um, which is like hard to say. <laughs> I think it's hard to say the least. But this, this whole deal is um, a way for you to build a server with a specific API to support whatever language you want. So Go, the Go team built one for Go. There's one for Python that I 
there's one from Microsoft that does Python. There's one from somewhere else that does Python. I don't remember which is which. Uh, there's one for Rust. There's one, there's one for everything. C Sharp, C++, maybe C++, maybe. I don't remember. But yeah, this, this thing has a list of, oh yeah, oh, here we go. Oh, one, two, three for C++. Boom, boom, boom. The list goes on. Look at this. Two for Erlang. Elixir. Elm. Elm. That's a brand new language. I've, I've played around with that a little bit. So go. We got a source graph one. I think this one is deprecated. Is it? Is it? Is it? Yeah. Deprioritize. They say go use go please. It's pronounced go please. At least, uh, at least from the person who did a talk on it uh, once that I saw, they pronounced it go please. Um, Eric, you need a thousand times a thousand if you want to convert microseconds to seconds. A thousand times a thousand. Oh, uh, wait. I thought you just need to do a thousand to get from micro. Oh, not Mila. Oh, yeah. You got to go a million times a, times a thousand from micro to Mila and then times a thousand from Mila to, to seconds. I got you. Okay. Rockerboo, you're using the Elixir LSP. Elixir. I've been, I've been meaning to check out Elixir. I checked out Phoenix, but my problem was I didn't know Elixir. Or yeah, my problem was I didn't know Elixir. I I kind of do. I did a little bit of Erlang, but then Elixir was talking about all these Erlang concepts, like the Beam. So I know what Beam is, but I didn't really know it enough to really grasp it. So I got to go back and learn Elixir itself. Oh, the Elixir tutorial on their site is actually really good. Man, I should stream that. I should stream learning Elixir. You should come and help me. That would be help. <laughs> that would be helpful uh, instead of me bumbling too much. Uh, but we're gonna bumble anyway today, so whatever. All right, we logged. Okay, we logged. Uh, let's try to put this recover through these paces. We're gonna panic. Do we recover? Do we recover? Good question. So this LSP is smart enough to know that. If you panic, it's game over. That's a wrap on the function. So it says unreachable because we already panicked. But that's okay. It's just a warning. I want to see what happens. Go run. Okay, let's do another curl. We got an internal server error. And then here, oh, this is the panic. Boom. Look at all that. So this is a, this is a stack trace, but it's not really formatted well. There's probably a formatter somewhere that does this better, but it's JSON for now. But really, if you wanted to format this, you just like blow it up. If it's a if it's a new line, put it on a new line. If it's a tab, tab it over, that kind of deal. But yeah, all right. So the, the show goes on, right? Show goes on. Yes, the show goes on. Uh, yeah, okay. Eric, I'm streaming trying to learn Rust. Yeah, I've seen some of your Rust and Embedded streams. So much failure. Yeah, you should do it on a specific day of the week. I, I, I'm pretty sure I subscribe to you. If not, I, I will, so I can keep up up on those. I wanna learn Rust. I, I know a little bit of Rust too. Uh, I, I know a little bit of a lot of stuff, but yeah, I, I wanna learn Rust. I don't know if I should learn Rust or Elixir first. I guess I'll just flip a coin or something. Spiel Programmer, thank you for that list. Sometimes difficult for Americans. Indeed it is. We, what do we use? Feet. We use feet and, well, we use grams. Do we use grams? No, we use pounds. See, it's difficult for me to even remember what Americans use. <laughs> yeah, we use pounds. So yeah, we, we got to get up on like, I know there's you know, kilograms and milligrams. We use milligrams for drugs. So there's that imperial system. Exactly. Isaiah, fun random tidbit. I just ran a report. My company of its end users have used 13.41 petabytes in the last 30 days. That is a spicy meatball. That's a spicy meatball. Yeah, that is a spicy meatball. Petabyte is what? 1,024 terabytes, right? I guess it's funny because we, I guess technically storage is not really... Is it S? Well, it uses SI prefixes, but it's not really times a thousand. It's times ten twenty four. So I don't know. If, I don't know what that means. Yeah, base eight. Oh yeah, Rockerboo. It is base. Eight. Yeah. 
I forgot about my base stuff. I learned that a while back, but I don't remember anymore. Oh, that's right, Isaiah. GIB versus gigabyte. Yeah. Gigabit versus gigabyte. Right? GIB is gigabit, I think. I never remember. Yeah, whichever you're measuring your data in. Exactly. I, d I like the 1024 thing. Oh, no. What is GIB? Oh, oh, there's a lowercase b and an uppercase b. Rocker boo? For real? Like, that's not confusing at all. What if you have a... Oh, gigabyte. What? what? Gigabyte is a... Gigabyte is a thousand GB? Oh, GG byte. That's a thing? Oh, no, no, no. Don't say sorry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. LM, okay, a thousand megabytes is a gigabyte or a GG byte? Giggy byte. thousand megabytes gigabyte is a thousand megabytes okay oh that's good to know so it's not 1024 gg byte is 1024 what okay oh and there's a wikipedia thank you rockaboo where there's a wikipedia for a gg byte gg byte is a multiple unit binary prefix gb oh gb i've been saying it wrong the whole time jibba jibbyte jibbyte yeah, okay. Now I see. GB is gigabyte. GIB is gigabyte. Gibabyte. Say that five times fast, right? Gibabyte. All right. Cool, cool. Yeah, so what did you say? How much does your work have? 13.41 petabytes. So that would be a thousand gigabytes. 13.41 petabytes in 30 days. Damn. That's a lot. Spiel programmer, sometimes this is used, but the difference is not that big anyway. I mean, I guess it could be if you're talking about what? If you're talking about going from megabytes to petabytes times a thousand times a thousand, it would be different, right? Or be a lot smaller than what times 1024 times 1024 could be. But yeah, I guess you're right. It's not not huge. 13.4. Oh, whoa. Okay. 13.41 petabytes is not 1341 terabytes. It's 13,410 terabytes. Oh, so is exabyte, is that in between terabyte and petabyte? Yeah, Rakuru, that's funny. Yeah, okay. That's how they sell ISP speeds in the US to use the larger number. Yep, yep, I know that. That is, uh, well, I guess it's not shady. They, they have a right to do it, but that's shady. That's real shady. Okay. Exabyte is after. Okay. So we got terabyte. Do we have terabyte and then petabyte after that? Let me, uh, let me, let me figure this out. I should, uh, I should Wikipedia this thing. Storage, uh, computer storage sizes. Computer data storage, this will maybe have it. No, this is about architecture. Du, du, du. Computer uh, gigabyte. Gigabyte, all right. One byte, a thousand kilobytes. So, okay, we've got decimal, I got you. So we've got byte, kilobyte, megabyte, and then we've got, what? Well, oh, this is not confusing at all. Yeah, okay. So it's called kilobyte in both metric and JEDIC. What is JEDIC? JEDIC memory standards. Joint Electron Device Engineering Council. What? So they call it the same thing in JEDIC, but IEC calls it kibibyte, mebibyte, gibibyte, tebibyte. Okay. Okay, okay, I got you. A thousand megabit per second is twelve point five megabyte per second. All right, Spiel programmer and Isaiah, you all are making a lot of sense. Ojetic did the DDR five spec. Cool. I only have. I'm only rocking DDR four on my machine, so that's. I think. Yeah, I think. So that's. Uh, I guess I got to get with the times, or maybe it's not even out yet. I have no idea. Let me check out some, what was I doing? Forget. 
not, not on yeah Rockapoo not on DDR5 yeah I I am assuming that you have to get a new motherboard for that or maybe yeah no I have a Rockapoo I have a a late what do I have I have uh, the secret the secret test motherboard not really I have a cheap motherboard uh okay all right so we're gonna go and. I think we should probably tie this into the Bing thing now. So we're going to try to make an API. I'm not going to render a website yet. I'm going to just do the API part because the rendering part, I'm going to render the like the, the search bar and the JavaScript that goes with the search bar and all that stuff. So we're going to stick to Echo. We're going to use Echo to make the search API. So I am going to get fancy. And I am going to do a thing called route groups. Let me head over to get started here. I'm on DDR. Oh, Rockabo, you're on DDR3. I probably am DDR3 as well. My media server, Isaiah, your media server computer is still on DDR2. Two, two gigabyte is 700, 700 millihertz is, or something stupid. Hey, man, that's not stupid, Isaiah. If it works, it works, right? Especially if it's like a media server, if it works, it works. I've rocked, I've rocked a Raspberry Pi for a while to drive like a little mini monitor over here. It's fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not mining Bitcoin on the thing, but it works fine. Uh, all right. We've got something called route groups down here. I think it's on this page. Static content. No. Where are we at here? No, no, no. Routing. That's the one I'm looking for. Path matching order. There we go. Groups. So this is going to make a group that is called G. So after you create the group, you have this G variable. All the routes that you put under G, if you do like G.get, let me just copy this in. We can show it. So I'm going to create a route group called API. And then I'm gonna, if I do like g.get search, whatever that is, whatever my handler is, we'll figure that out in a second. But if I do like this g.get search, the real route that Echo is going to serve up is going to be slash API slash search. So this is the prefix for everything that I do with G. So. It's a little, it's a little handy if you're gonna make a ton of different API endpoints. So yeah, I say it's just funny. Oh, it's an OPC, nice. Hooked up to a TV, Perplex. I've used Plex for a long time. I love it. I love Plex. My uh, one of my friends runs a Plex server, and then he moved to Miami. I'm on the West Coast. He's on the, I'm in the North, Pacific Northwest. He's in Miami. So it's like the slowest stream ever with terrible quality. So I just never use it anymore. Could I, Spiel Programmer, could I start a Bitcoin miner on my free Azure account? <laughs> but I, I guess I would lose my job fast then. Yeah, I have to, I would have to mine enough Bitcoin to pay me enough salary to last until I can find a new job before I get fired. So if you have a secret, a Bitcoin mining secret, if I can maybe get like a, some secret quantum computer they have, maybe I could do that. But hey, if I can't, I probably shouldn't. Probably. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, Eric, that dev, you just accidentally started. You accidentally went live. Bummer. But not bummer, actually. Go live. Why not? We can raid your, we can raid your channel. <laughs> Fastest lawsuit in the West. Yeah. Okay. Spiel Pro is not efficient anymore with all the ASICs. How would one go about hiding that kind of traffic? I honestly have no idea. You mean the Bitcoin mining traffic? I mean, I don't, I don't know. VPN? I have no idea. Can you do some kind of peering, like a, uh, like a VNet peering somehow? I don't know. I have no idea. Spiel programmer, not that high for mining. Okay. I didn't know that. I've actually never mined Bitcoin. Eric, or Eric, uh, you'll go live whenever I'm wrapping up. Okay. I'll give you some head start. I was going to probably go for another hour or so. So if, if you wanted to start before that, all good. That's all good for me. Uh, I'll just join you when I'm done. 
but otherwise, love to have you here too. So it's all good. Isaiah, you're curious. I, uh, they've been able to sniff out blockchain traffic. I heard that too. Some ISPs sniffed it out a while back. I'm sure clouds, yeah, clouds probably know how to do it too. Um, yeah, all right. So we've got slash API slash search. The other thing I want to do is do a query string parameter. So I want to do like, you know, like curl, uh, localhost, one, two, three, four, whatever it was, uh, API search, and then like term equals, uh, how do you mine Bitcoin? Something like that. So I'm going to keep that around. Whoop. Let me keep that around. Maybe put it over here just to remind myself what the hell I'm doing. So we've got to figure out how to do a handler that can deal with uh, query strings. So let me just copy. I'm just going to rename this search. So we've got search. Oh, actually, I still got my hello. I'm going to copy it then. I'm going to call it search. And we're going to keep it empty for now. So just so I can put something in here. So actually let's do, I just want to make sure that it works. This is the search endpoint. This is the search endpoint. Okay. I'm going to run it again. Head over here. Okay. So I want to do API search. Okay, so it worked. Did it work? It worked. Yeah, this is the search endpoint. Okay. And then, yes, we also saw the log for the endpoint. And right there, we've got slash API slash search. Perfect. All right, so now we got to figure out how to get the search term out of the query string. So... I'm pretty sure that's over here in request. So formed it, query parameters. They're just showing me how to do a curl for query parameters. I already knew how to do that. Oh, they have this binding. Okay. So you can do binding. You could do binding. So like they let you make a struct. If you don't know what a struct is, basically a bucket of data in Go. Uh, you, you say like type user struct, and then you say, I want a name. I want name to be a string. I want email to be a string. And then anybody can create a user and they can store the name and the email in that bucket. So in this case, it's a little bit more than a bucket too. It's a user bucket. And then we've got this thing called a struct tag. This is telling Echo when you decode or e-code, <laughs> e-code, when you decode or encode JSON, when you decode a field called name, dump it into here, into the name field. When you're decoding a form, a form request, dump it into the name or variable. If you're decoding a query string that has a name in the query string, dump it into here. And then same deal for the email. And then when you're encoding JSON, take the name and call it underscore name. Same deal. I don't know if you would ever encode to a form. I guess you could, but probably not. But you would do that anyway. You would encode name, or so you would encode uppercase name to lowercase name. And then I guess also if you're encoding to a query string for some reason, you would take the name value and call it lowercase name. One other thing before I do this, if you're doing this kind of thing with echo, if you're telling it how to decode or encode something, you always have to have an uppercase. Or in other words, you always have to have that field be exported. And that's just so some internal stuff can, can mess with it. Uh, so yeah, Rockerboo compile time structure from a form field. Oh boy, that sentence in posts. Yeah, that was a little bit long. Let me just show it. That was, yeah. Sometimes I nerd out a little bit and I got a long ass sentence. So let me just show it in action. So I'm going to put my user here. I'm going to actually just call it uh, search query. And uh, let me just call it uh, query, I guess. 
So I am not going to deal with JSON or forms yet, but let me just leave it in there anyway. So I'm going to call it query, query. And so all of them are going to be called query no matter how it comes into the, the whole dealio. Um, so, oh, Rocker Boo is your sentence? Nah. I mean, I got it. Compile time structure form from a form field. Yeah, I'm going to, I can say that five times fast. Form from a form field. Okay, that's one. I'm going to stick. You just extrapolate that. I, do, I got one, so I could do five. We'll just keep it at that. Search query. Um, uh, Rocker Boo, so this takes JSON or form from post requests. Yes. So this one and this one would take a post or a put or what else can you do? Does option, whatever has an HTTP body. So uh, yeah, uh, JSON could be in a post or put. Uh, a form request, if you do like them, uh, what is it, an HTT or an HTML, you can have like a form and then you can have a method. Method could be put or post. So either way, yeah, this would come in. And this decodes like the standard HTML form body. What's well, HTTP form body? I keep getting those messed up in my mind. Um, standard thing that you're familiar you're familiar with already. So let's actually see. Um, uh, HTTP form encoding. This, wait, that's a header. Does it have it in the Wikipedia? This. So it can decode that. That would be this one here. And then query is query string, key value pairs. So this one is a little bit more interesting because the whole struct is saying, this is what my query string should be. So if I added another one and then I put one of these over here, I called it query two, three, two, whatever it is, whatever you want. This whole struct is saying, all right, the whole query string, you gotta have a query or actually over here, you gotta have a query and you gotta have a query too. And the thing's gonna fail if you don't. So you just gotta keep that in mind. It's gonna fail if you don't. So let me take it back out though, cause I just want one query. Um, I put this lowercase instead of uppercase, uh, just cause uppercase it's exported outside of the package main, this, this little thing here, but I really don't need to export it. So I'm just gonna leave it not exported but I've got to have this exported. It's a little tricky. It's like, if I create a search query, this thing's got to be exported for the underlying decoder, not for me, for anybody else. It's just for the underlying decoder. So this has to be exported for the underlying echo query string decoder. Uh, oh, Isaiah Evander, how's Portland? I've been eyeing the area for some time. I love the PNW, uh, the Pacific Northwest vibes. I like Portland. I, I've only been here uh, a little over a year. So I saw last summer, uh, which was cool because we could go out. <laughs> we saw the winter, also cool. The rain is real in the winter though, I'll tell you. The rain is real. Um, and then we saw this summer, which like I can walk like five feet, but you know, can't go, can't go out to restaurants and stuff. Uh, so I can walk about five feet that way before I hit like an area where there's a bunch of people. Uh, but yeah, I'm into the vibes too. I like it. I really like it here. Haven't checked out much of the rest of Oregon or Washington, uh, except Seattle, a, bu a bunch of Seattle. So I don't know what the rest of the Pacific Northwest is like vibe wise. Um, but hopefully uh, when things clear up and, and, you know, coronavirus is, I guess, more under control, um, I guess that's what we would say, what we call it, under control. Uh, then then I'm going to check it out. It should be cool. Rockerboo, is it normal to templatize like that in Go with the backticks? Um, this isn't really a template. It's called a struct, a struct tag. I call it struct fields, but technically it's called a struct flag. <laughs> Not flag. Tag with a T. My bad. It's called a struct tag. So it's not a template. It's specifically used for the underlying runtime. Uh, so the echo decoder, 
getting down deep into this, the echo decoder is using something below that, which is using, uh, which that is using for JSON, it's using something from the standard library. For this form stuff and the query stuff, it's using something that the standard library itself uses called reflect. And reflect is also in the standard library. So bottom line is reflect is being used by echo here. Sorry, echo is using reflect here to figure out what these struct tags say. And then it's using that to map the names that are coming in, in the query string or the JSON or the form. It's using to map those names into this, into this variable. And then it takes the value out of that name. Let's take the query string, takes the value out of that name and puts it into here. So let's say we've got a uh, local host, one, two, three, API search, and then query equals thing, whatever. So the underlying runtime, Echo is gonna use the underlying runtime package, the reflect package, sorry. I'm all over the board here, my bad. Echo is gonna use the underlying reflect package to say, all right, we've got a query. Now we've got a struct that has a query tag in it, right there, under the query tag, the query, the name of that tag is called query. Okay, so it's redundant. Um, but this is saying the query string has a query parameter in it. Let's make this a little bit, a uh, little bit different. We're gonna call this term. Uh oh, my screen go black. Uh oh, am I back? All right, my bad. My machine does that sometimes. It it cuts out. There we go. I think we're back. Yeah, so, all right, I'm gonna clear this up a little bit. I'm gonna call this term. And we're gonna call this term here too. This is gonna help me explain a lot better. All right, we've got a term field in the struct. When a request like this comes in, I'm gonna tell echo decode this query string into my struct. When I say that, echo is gonna use the reflect package to figure out, all right, I've got this field and I've got a query string that's got to have term in it. Okay, that's right here. Now, Echo's going to take the query string here and say, got it, I got a term, the value is thing. I'm going to put value into this field called term right there. Hope that helps. Sorry for the long-winded, mistakes-ridden explanation. So yeah, bobbing baboon, it does it does not work with unexported fields. That's exactly right. So this is a no-go. This is a okay go. Spiel program error. Yeah, you got me. You got me. Query for all the things is messed up for sure. So yeah, I'm going to call it, I'll, go, I'll call it term for now. We could change it up later. Isaiah, you got a bunch of family in Seattle. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know the area. I want to get, get, I want to check out more of the area. Um, like I heard the Oregon coast is nice. Um, I don't know. I've never been to Eastern Oregon. I want to see some more of the mountains and stuff like that. Never been skiing or up to the mountains at all, really. So yeah, um, I'll report back if I <laughs> if I get out of the house. It can do anything. Um, Spiel programmer, is this fast? Usually reflection isn't that fast. Yeah, it's not. I'll be honest. It's not the fastest thing in the world. Like there are many things in Go that would be bad to use reflection for. But it's not it's not slow enough that you shouldn't use it. I'll put it that way. So it's not gonna eat up tons of memory. It's not gonna take a bunch more CPU cycles. We're talking like a couple milliseconds slower if you do a decode on every single request. So I guess it's up to you. It's up to you what you define as fast and slow. Uh, and what you define as like efficient and inefficient. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I, all I can say is it's up to you. So for me, this is the most convenient, easiest to read way to decode from a query string or JSON or whatever else. You could write code that actually goes in and like parses the JSON yourself and then looks for those terms. And that would be totally legit too. And there are libraries that will help you with that. 
And also, like, if you look at gRPC, that's a not a JSON or query string thing, but it's a different way to send data across the network, across the internet or wherever, across any network. And that does basically what I was just saying. Like, it'll it hard codes your fields and it does the decoding and encoding into binary really fast because it's not doing reflection. It's not doing anything fancy at runtime. It's literally got hard-coded fields and it's encoding and decoding hard-coded. So if you wanted to go that that direction, totally legit. I always do it this way because it just is easier for me to write, understand, and then read later on. So that's me, but yeah, it's totally up to you. Uh, McCatch, that's just the way Windows works. Windows goes black screen. That's a bummer. I didn't know that, but I have been seeing it more lately. Uh, me and Eric yesterday were talking about maybe we should pave our machines, uh, pave our computers and like start over with Linux. Every time the screen goes black, I, I kind of consider it a little bit more <laughs> to be honest with you. But yeah, it's good. It's good enough for now. I really like WSL2. Um, and then like I got the semi familiar windows apps. Um, I was saying before, like I came from Mac, so I am still sort of getting used to windows but it's helping a lot that I can still use VS Code and Linux on WSL2. So, yeah. Joker Dan, how's Echo going? I like it. It's going okay. Uh, we are up to, we created a server. We got some middleware in place. So we're able to log on every request and we're, we're protecting ourselves if we panic. We got an API endpoint and we're figuring out how to decode the actual search term. Uh, spiel programmer query is fine, but I meant why I have to specify for JSON form and query if it's the same for all the oh all the if it's the same for all three things. Yeah, um, it, it's kind of a, a a problem or you could call it like a limitation of how Echo works of how Echo treats this thing. It would be nice to say like all, and you can say all, and it just be like, all right. If it's a form, if it's a query string, if it's a JSON, always call it term. Echo, I, as far as I know, Echo doesn't have that, but it would be totally a cool feature and it, it would be like a legit feature if Echo did have that. I think they probably just haven't thought of it because there's no reason you couldn't do it. Um, and they just said, we're going to give people the flexibility, but obviously this is more work. But... Since for now, I'm just going to take the search term in as a query string, I can just delete this and say, all I got is query string. All I want is query string. I'm good to go. Um, oh, well, Isaiah, Azure has a lot of Linux in it. A lot of the stuff you run on Azure runs Linux. So, yeah, I mean, everyone runs Windows. Well, not everyone. There's a lot of Macs, too. A lot of people run Macs uh, at work. But... Um, there's a few people, as far as I know, that run Linux for their work desktop. Um, a lot of people obviously run Windows. I switched from Mac to Windows because I wanted to just try it out. Um, and WSL2 put me over the edge for sure. This, like having a Linux environment, this is literally running what? Debian. I think it's running, does it say what version? I forget what version I'm running, but it's literally a Debian install, headless Debian install. So I'm pretty happy with that. Just tell Bill that you want an OS that works. But can't, uh, I don't have a direct line to him, unfortunately. If you do, hit me up, connect us. I would love to talk to him about, about uh, getting some more Linux support at Microsoft. Yeah, so Joker Dad, I'm super pumped. I'm glad that it looks familiar. Um, we're going we're gonna to truck on and do some more search term stuff. But uh, I was saying before, we're going to try to build a search engine with Echo. So I'm going to use the, the Bing Web Search API uh, when it's all said and done. Then I'm going to build a front end using Svelte. Um, me and Eric were talking about Svelte yesterday, actually. So that's where I got the, the whole idea. Yeah, Spiel Programmer, Windows is not that bad. Usually it is bad drivers that messes things up. Agreed. When I first built this computer, I struggled with drivers for like three days. I was just wrestling Windows, trying to like stack. Oh, here we go again. Stack Overflow, plenty of stuff to try to figure out what drivers to download or if I had to patch a driver, which was annoying. Uh, but yeah, I got, I mean, I got it now and 
I just like pray that nothing happens pretty much. Uh, Isaiah, why not just a VM? Actually, this is a VM. Just like it's a VM that I don't think about because Windows takes care of it. Um, they're a little bit lighter weight too. So like I can start up an Ubuntu over here. I want to update all my ZSH. Sure. So like I can start up an Ubuntu here. It's a separate VM, but it's a little lighter weight than running like a virtual box or a Vagrant, using Vagrant to do virtual box. But you could configure your Vagrant to launch a tiny little VM just like this. It's just that this is like takes care of it all for me. There's no Vagrant files that I have to deal with. It's just literally, hey, I want to launch an Ubuntu or a Debian. And you can install more distros if you want, but I'm just familiar with, with Debian. I'm most familiar with Debian. So, um, yeah. Yeah, Joker Dan, Svelte. I, I've read a ton about Svelte. I've used Svelte the most. I use a little bit of React and I'm doing some Vue, uh, but I use Svelte the most. It kind of clicks more for me because it's like I got, I got the JavaScript, the HTML, and the CSS next to each other. I know you can do that in Vue too. I haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, but I could do it all together. And then I compile that into like straight up JavaScript. I don't have to think as much about the virtual DOM stuff. I don't, I don't really understand. I don't feel like I understand the ins and outs of it enough to like deploy a production site yet. So um, WSL is a VM. Yep, it has access to the file system. So I can do um, the mount directory C and then let's see users, me, desktop. So if I LS in that, I see the desktop. Like that's the same exact thing as this. So, you know, you got like five, five, three, eight, blah, blah, blah. That's like a gopher, a picture of a gopher. And I got all my shortcuts and all that stuff. So yeah, it's access to the file system. It's not the fastest. I'll, I'll, be, I'll just say that right up front. It's not the fastest. So if you're going to be like moving gigabytes or, or gigabytes over from WSL to Windows or vice versa, you got to wait. It's not going to be, even if you've got like a, a, an SSD, it's not going to be super fast because it's going over a VM boundary. But it's kind of the benefit of having this built into Windows that like the WSL people are doing a lot of work to make it fast because they can embed this VM super tight with Windows. So at least I've heard like they're doing a lot of work there to make it fast. Uh, Joke Dan, uh, done. Uh, oh yeah, done a bunch of React, sprinkle of Vue. Yeah, I mean, as far as I know, React, Vue, and and that React view are maybe tied for first or maybe one and two in terms of like usage and, and ecosystem size. Svelte is, I've, I've heard Svelte is three, but I'm going to guess it's kind of a distant three so far. And then like maybe it's rising up a little bit because it's, yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, it's getting a ton of attention for sure. Uh, Rocker boot NTS driver might be the issue. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe I should look into that actually. I've gotten like a, decent amount of throughput going across the vm boundary but like yeah if i can make it better i'll make it better for sure i should look into that eric i didn't suffer through vista i hadn't used windows since shortly after xp till a couple months ago when i decided to experiment with windows as a dev platform same exactly the same here i did 98 uh i went to uh ubuntu well i went to debian and then susi and then a and then back to yeah, and then I went back to Ubuntu. Then I went to Mac. Uh, I I guess I enjoyed pay, like paying millions of dollars for a laptop for a while. I stuck with Mac for a while. And then, yeah, it was right around when you did it, Eric. I think it was right after you did it. I went over to Windows too. Uh, Bobby Baboon, you switched to Kubuntu on a home PC and haven't looked back. Yeah, works great for VS Code and Goland both. I believe it. I have another, uh, I actually have a Surface Go that I put Ubuntu on. Same deal. It's, it's fairly straightforward. It's fast. It's pretty good. Isaiah, pretty good at Windows at that point. Vista was a mistake. Yep. Thank God Windows 7 came. I've heard that. I've heard that. Isaiah, I thought, I thought it was pronounced Susie. Is it, are you supposed to say S-U-S-E? I always heard Susie. I don't know. I don't know, but you know, all these acronyms, or not acronyms, names, Gigabyte, Gigabyte, Susie, 
I'm not even going to say GIF or JIF, although I just say it. I just said it, but, you know, the, it's almost like um, naming. The religious war is over naming, so, yeah. Hey, at Joker Dan, I had to put Ubuntu on, or after I put Ubuntu on the Service Go, uh, I had to get uh, drivers for the Wi-Fi card, or the Wi-Fi chip, so, yeah. Isaiah, oh, you say Seuss instead of Dr. Seuss. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. I'm going to stick with Susie, though. I like the way it has a ring. So, Oh, Rocker Boo, you just moved to Arch. Oh, I got you. My bad. Yeah, my bad. Eric used Arch for a while. Uh, Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to go back to this. I forgot about this. So we're doing, uh, we're doing query strings. So what we got to do is create a new version of this struct. We got to create it empty because we're about to decode something into the struct. So what, what creating an empty struct means is that term is going to be what's called a zero value. You'll probably hear that sometimes in, in the Go world. Zero value for a string means empty string. Zero value for numbers, ints, floats, etc. It's just going to be zero. So this is going to be the zero value struct of search query. All right, so we've got Q. Now I'm going to go back to my... Uh, Docs, wherever those were. Yeah, bind. All right. So they're doing new user. I didn't do new here. It's essentially, essentially, not technically, but essentially you end up with the same thing in queue. You end up with a pointer to search query. All right. So pointers, pointers, pointers. <laughs> Let me... Let me get back to you on pointers. We're gonna we're gonna try to decode the thing first, and then we're gonna talk about what a pointer is. Joker Dan, uh, Jeff, who's Jeff? Oh Isaiah, no, I don't know if you say it wrong. Maybe I say it wrong. I I, I kind of I guess I just I just come up with a name in my head, and then and then I just keep saying it, and then eventually it slips out like just now it slips out out loud, and then then uh, you know all bets are off. I'm in trouble. Yeah, Eric.dev Arch, I know it's your favorite distro. I remember yesterday you were talking about like a like a massive tower as tall as your desk, and then you put Arch on it. It was like way overpowered for Arch. Oh, the meme is an Arch user will tell you they use Arch. I got you, Rocker Boo. I got you. Yeah, Joker Dan, exactly. Every type has a default zero value. It's not like C where they can just be garbage. Exactly. You can't just initialize memory in Go. It's going to have a value in it no matter what. So even though if I say like new search query, if I do that, this isn't exactly like the new or the malloc. It's not like doing C++ or malloc in C. It's actually creating a, it's creating the memory for search query, but it's actually creating a search query that has an empty string inside of term. So I didn't do new because it reminds me like it reminds me of C too much where I make the wrong assumption. So this is saying everything but the ampersand is saying create an empty search query, to, which is going to have that empty string. Then the ampersand is saying get the address of it. Familiar to C and C++ folks. Get the address of it. So now Q is going to have a pointer to search query. Joker Dan, pointers feel a lot more straightforward and go, I, I agree with that. I think the main thing is you can't change the address of a pointer. You can't do like, you know, Q plus plus. You can't say now I want Q to point to this thing. It always either points to that search query or I have to say Q equals another address of a search query. Helps me a little bit more. Rockerboo mostly just wanted to try Window Manager instead of the built-in replacement. Now I can move around my windows without a cursor and spaces are really fast. feels good. Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. Windows, Windows initially, for me, Windows was a step back in terms of moving around without a cursor. I had to install, like, I installed this thing called Power Toys, which helps me a bit. I figured out Windows versions of spaces. Oh, there we go. I figured out, win I figured out Windows versions of spaces. Um, it's a little bit more janky, I think, but yeah, it is what it is. 
Uh, Isaiah, hey Eric, I've been having a heck of a time getting pretty much any Linux distro functioning on my MacBook Air. Is there something I'm missing that makes parallel OSs so hard on Macs? I, whew, maybe Eric can answer that. I use Bootcamp. Bootcamp seemed to be okay with Ubuntu 18.04. That's all, that's all I've ever done. So wish I could help you more. Joker Dan, Windows Fancy Zones. Yeah, I haven't used that. I th is that a Ubuntu thing? Fancy Zones? Because Windows has Fancy Zones too. Ah, not sure. Uh, yeah, might want to look into bootloaders and Mac might have sp something special. I thought Bootcamp dealt with it for you. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Isaiah, hey, did you know that I use Arch Linux? Air of superiority. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, in language in the languages world, I think that's like Haskell people. It's like, oh, I use Haskell. Like you, you're supposed to bow down to the Haskell programmers. Joker Dan, I never really see people use new and go. Yeah, I was watching a meetup the other day um, that was given. Uh, it was put on, uh, and there was a talk given by Bill uh, Kennedy. He's he does training a lot. He said he never uses new. He didn't say why. I didn't get a chance to ask him why, but I thought it was interesting. Like, I guess kind of telling maybe. So like why, uh, or that someone who's got that much experience who teaches Go to that many people would never use new. So that my, I got my reasons, but you know, maybe everyone has their own reasons too. Uh, Isaiah, my thought was uh, EUFI versus BIOS, uh, however that works, but the install tools I'm using don't have a way to make sure that, that the distinction, I don't think. Okay. Yeah. If it's on the Mac, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Maybe the, the Apple Silicon thing going forward. I mean, you might have to use an ARM build of Ubuntu. But as far as I know, EUFI is the standard on Macs. I thought Bootcamp does it for you. That figures out like, well, not does it for you. I guess maybe it emulates BIOS for the Linux install. But I know they don't support Linux. They only support Windows on Bootcamp. So I... I barely figured it out. What spaces virtual desktops on a Mac spaces is sort of like, yes, sort of like a virtual desktop. You can kind of like, uh, you got um, like a key shortcut to scroll between um, different spaces. They have different groups of windows in them and that kind of stuff. Isaiah used both Rufus and Unit boot in. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. I wish I could, I wish I could help with that more. I wish I remember what I did too. Uh, is there a, definitely evil? Is there a good way to organize which extensions load when working on specific projects with VS code? That's a great question. I think, I think you can have a dot VS code. Oh my, what have I done? Oh, wow. Look at this. My keyboard. <laughs> my keyboard no longer types. Anyway, let me explain this and then I'm going to go on to figuring out my Windows problems. Is there a good way to organize which extensions load when working on specific projects with VS Code? Uh, yeah, I believe so. You can create a .VS Code directory inside of your project. And once you do that, you can put a config file inside of it with a list of extensions that you want to load. Eric says, I mostly have been straight Linux, so I never put Linux on a MacBook. B. Kettleson on Twitter and here organizes GopherCon with me as coworker of yours truly. Uh, and Eric's has put Linux on MacBooks a number of times. Yeah. He, I think he is like, he's the person to ask about many things Linux, if you, if you want to. He's done a lot of uh, putting Linux on various machines lately. Bill is cool. Yeah, I like Bill for sure. There's a life wire for searching nice or is a life wire for putting Linux on Mac. Nice. They have something to their dual boot. Yeah. I remember something like that. Joker Dan, I think it's called spaces on Mac. I'm not sure about what it's called on Linux. Hacker URL detected. Which URL? Did you try to post one rocker boo? Oh yeah, Joker Dan, you can get Leo's, you can let VS Code manage it by creating a workspace for VS Code. 
Yeah, you then go through the extension list and disable or enable for workspace. That is under, can I do this? Can I even open? I might, might have to close down my power toys. Exit. Nope. Um, yeah, so you can go into your into your settings. Can I find settings here? So what's going on here is my keyboard doesn't work anymore. When I type A, that happens. When I type G, nothing happens. So I gotta figure that out, but I'll show everything I can by clicking for now. If you go into here and hit workspace, if you do something like that, then it's gonna automatically save. See that, it just popped up. It's gonna automatically save your stuff to a .vs code folder. And let me just make this bigger. It's gonna automatically save your stuff to a .vs code folder under a settings.json file. So I didn't select or unselect any extensions, but you can do that too. It'll automatically fill this out for you. You can fill it out manually too, but this is this is what you can do. So you can uh, you can check. You can basically just check this into your repo, and then anybody else who grabs the repo and opens it in VS Code is going to have that same setup for you. Uh, there is spaces for Windows built in. Windows plus Tab. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Windows Tab works. Am I back to? Nope, not back to working yet. Uh, seems like Windows key is stuck. Is it? Nope. Okay, I can control T. Oh, yeah. Hey, definitely evil. You saved the day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I thought it was because I've got that power toys thing. Um, if you're using Windows, check this out. You can download it. Um, I think you can download your own build and it's also like in that uh, the Microsoft store. Uh, it's got fancy zones is a cool one. You can drag a window and make them, you just drag it left or right and it just puts them next to each other. There's a bunch of other stuff too. I use Power Toys Run as like the uh, spotlight replacement for Windows. I'm used to spotlight on Mac, so I, I'm used to it uh, or <laughs> I'm used to it for Mac, so I'm used to hitting control space on Windows, which used to blow everything up because that was the Windows. That control uh, command space on Mac is basically in the same location as Windows space on Windows. So I set it up so when I do Windows space on my keyboard, it pops up the spotlight window. It's, a little, it's super helpful. Uh, Joker Dan, Power Toys is very cool. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, I discovered it, I don't know, a month ago, and I just been nerding out on it, trying to do every everything under the sun. And you see that the, uh, the fallout is sometimes my keyboard gets messed up, and I don't know whether the Windows key is stuck or it's that. But now that you say this, definitely evil, every time this happens, I'm just going to hit the Windows key. Hopefully that'll fix it. Joker Dan, run has a local index DB, though, from what I can tell, it stores it in memory. Yours eats up 800 megabytes to a gig of RAM at times. Wow. Wow. Far as I know, um, Mac, like Spotlight has that too, but I don't know about, I don't know if it stores it in memory. That's, the Power Toys version seems crazy that it would store your whole, everything you search for in memory. Crazy, crazy. Eric.dev, I use mine for streaming too, so I have my main monitor split. Part of it is for the stream. Other portion of the screen you can't see. I keep chat on the same monitor. Yeah, I I don't, I should. I just don't have a big enough monitor. This is where my chat is. So that's why I keep looking down. Let me write some more Go though, since I can type now. What? All right, so we've got our query struct. I'm going to go into the echo docs and I'm going to do one of these. They've got this bind function. Oh yes, not that. I need to control C because I shut down power toys. Power toys had my uh, key, keyboard rena uh, key remaps too. So we've got our if error equals c.bind query. I have to pass the query as a pointer, not a value into here. This must be a pointer. 
Oh yeah, and I've got to do ctx dot bind. And let's see the, the docs for bind. It doesn't even say that it needs to have a pointer. I know for sure that it does. So just make sure you're always doing new or my preference is doing ampersand when you set your Q variable or whatever you're gonna call it. So what is this line doing? Okay, first of all, ctx.bind is gonna take the URL. The URL is stored inside the context. Gonna take the URL. <clears throat> it's gonna try to map that URL's query string into my search query. So that's term. It's gonna return an error. It's gonna return an error whether that mapping succeeded or failed. So that's what this part is doing. I'm setting the variable error equal to whatever ctx.bind returns. Now, after the semicolon, this right here, error not equal to nil, that's the real part of the if. That's what it's actually checking. This is a shorthand. This whole line is a shorthand. So it's saying first do this, set the error value, then check if error not equal to nil. If it is, then return something. I'm gonna do uh, format error couldn't, uh, couldn't decode query string. And then I'll put the, the uh, error in there as a string and we'll leave it at that. So, oh yeah, by the way, did you see how, let me do that again. This is a, this is a part that I like. See how it's red here, it says undeclared name, and then I do a save, and it's, it shifts down because it puts the format in. That's one of the cool things that uh, that I like about the Go plugin in VS Code. Pretty sure that GoLand does it too. I'm a VS Code user, so that's that's why uh, I, I nerd out about those kinds of things. Rockaboo, chat is not important. Chat has not been important. Us text only peasants. Uh, not true, not true. I, I love all of you. Ask questions, leave comments. We can go on tangents. All is good. I'm on here for two hours because I want to go on tangents. I want to have that discussion. Uh, I want to hang out. Uh, so yeah, questions, comments, tangents, whatever. You are important. Yes, very true. And I'm serious. No sarcasm. Put stuff in chat. I love talking to all of you. All right. So. We decoded our query string into search query. Got it. Next up, we got to do something with the search query. So we can return JSON. I think I'm going to return JSON because this is going to be an API that eventually my, my Svelte JavaScript front end is going to use. So I wanted to return some JSON. So let me copy that in here. What JSON are we going to return? That's the question. Oh yeah, I need ctx.json. Now what? So I'm gonna make another struct for my my uh, response JSON. So I don't know all the things that are gonna go in there yet, but I know I need to have probably like a list of answers of like query results or something like that. So I'm gonna do like type query results. Uh, and then I'm just going to do like result list. I'm going to make that a slice of strings. All right. Hey, Isaiah, thanks so much for coming. I appreciate you. See you next time, hopefully. Hey, and what's in my ops, uh, what's in my ops sec? Can't read the whole thing there. Thank you so much for the follow. -up. Apologies for the late thanks, but I really appreciate that. Oh yeah. Rocker boot J S O N. I can't, I can't do it. I got to go with JSON. I can't do JSON. Takes too long. <laughs> yeah, Jason. Okay, we're going back to this. JSON. See you again, Isaiah. Thanks for coming. I hope to see you next time. <laughs> yeah, Eric. Eric is going to do that Twitch bot, changing the voice. So, yeah. Goland beats VS Code on all accounts, even on autocomplete. Bobbing Baboon. You, you might be right. You might be right. I, I used Golan for a while. Uh, I went over to VS Code because I liked the sort of pluggability aspect of it, and it's free. So I, I'm, I'm a cheapskate, so I like that it's free too. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a neck and neck, I think. It's it's up to it's up to personal opinion. I was in it was that same meetup I was in 
someone asked about this too. And we were going uh, back and forth, like listing the pros and cons of each one. And it was neck and neck, really. I mean, if you if you have the license for Goland and you like the workflow, I don't think there's any reason in the world that you would want to go over to VS Code. And then same goes if you're used to your workflow in VS Code and you like the features and you're okay with the features, then I would just stick with it. Now, that being said, when modules came out, VS Code support for modules was bad. The underlying tools that's, that power VS Code for modules were also pretty bad. So it's gotten better and it still is getting better. Everything under the hood or every all the IntelliSense stuff that you see is powered by that Go Please server I was talking about as that language server. That is the thing that's getting so much better that is allowing VS Code to get better. So if you haven't given it a try lately, and you're up for giving it a try, I would go for it now or maybe wait a month or two for the next couple of releases of Go of the Go Please tool. If you're happy with Goland, there's no reason. There's no reason to go over to VS Code unless you're just kind of curious or you want something new. Yeah, Rockaboo, I do have to bait the chat. Yep, yep, yep. Isaiah, that'd be cool if you came to Eric's. I would love to see you. Otherwise, hopefully see you another time. Joker Dan, VS Code. Yeah, I do a bunch of different stuff too. Having one editor is cool. Uh, being used to the, the features and everything, nothing wrong. On the other hand, nothing wrong with using multiple. Um, I actually lied about Visual Studio before. I just remembered this actually. I did some F Sharp a while back. I have Visual Studio on here. I use it for F Sharp. I would never do F Sharp. I probably, I'm not going to say never. I probably wouldn't do F Sharp on VS Code or somewhere else. It's just because it's so good on Visual Studio. Just like, seriously, on Goland, it's so good because everything is there out of the box. You don't have to figure anything out. But here, you got to figure stuff out. Like something will go wrong with your plugin eventually, and you got to figure it out. So those are that's the pros and cons. Extensibility versus ease of like getting started. So yeah, there, there's some of the pros and cons. Bit of a learning curve. Bobbing, bobbing baboon. Oh, I can't. I got to say that five times fast too. Bobbing baboon. Are you, you mean uh, the JetBrains IDEs have a learning curve? Or is it is it something else like VS Code or something like that? Because I found Go, Goland. I found like I, I, there's a lot going on there. But I found that I could get started super fast and then pick up bits and pieces as I as I kind of went. But I, I kind of see what you mean. I used IntelliJ back in the day. That one for sure. Yeah, I had to learn a lot there. Same goes for Visual Studio too. I think it's just like some of these IDEs have so much that like you miss out if you don't learn. Like if you're trying to debug... Like I remember, uh, what was it? IntelliJ. I was trying to debug in IntelliJ and all I was doing was like breakpoints. But I missed out on all the introspection stuff they have. And like at the time I was a noob. So I didn't know about step in and step out as well. So like I was a noob at IntelliJ and I didn't know about those things. And then when I learned them, I like kicked myself. I was like, man, I could have saved so much time. That's not to say I should have sat down with a book beforehand because you got to get work done. You know, time is money and all that. But uh, once you do learn it, it's like world changing when you learn something like, you know, something like a feature like that in IntelliJ or wherever else. Rockerboo, I'm very against learning most of the IDE tools because I want to swap very easily. I don't know if it's a good idea, though. I think it's just something like actually we, it was kind of talking about this on uh, BeginBot stream. I think I pronounced that wrong too. Is it Beganbot? Not, not, not a hundred percent on how to pronounce that. Uh, but anyway, on that last stream, we were talking about um, like which programming language is the best. It's like there's no best, honestly. Like you, you gotta, you gotta. I don't know. I guess you gotta just try it out. See, see for yourself. For me, I like the extensibility part in VS Code. But that's not to say in a past life, I loved IntelliJ. Like there was no, there was no Java IDE I would ever use but IntelliJ at the time. 
If I went back to Java, I probably would still go to IntelliJ. So like, I don't like learning all the massive IDEs, but sometimes, sometimes I do. It's like, it depends on my, my language that I'm using in the moment, what I got to do, how long I have to tinker versus I got to get something done, like that kind of stuff. I love the way the passive tools work though. Oh, I can add passive tools though. Oh, like what's a passive tool? What's an example? Is that like VS Code or something like that? Oh, then definitely evil. I'm very family with how, oh, you're very familiar with how the JetBrain IDEs work. I spent the last four years doing almost exclusive Android dev. In my opinion, Rider feels a lot better than Visual Studio. I can see that for Android dev. There's a lot you got to keep in your mind there for sure. Languages and tools are mostly preference or use case. Joker Dan, totally agree. Totally agree. I like syntax highlighting. I added an LSP for TypeScript and Elixir recently, and that's nice to have with all the code there. Rockaboo, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see Rockaboo. Syntax highlighting is a passive tool. Totally. Without syntax highlighting, I don't want to write code. Simple as that. Like, this this stuff is nice. Being able to roll over and, like, go to go to definition, like, all that. Super cool to have. I, I, I'm assuming that would be, like, an active an active tool. Super good to have that. But without the syntax highlighting, I'm out. Full stop. Like, just, I don't know. That's all I could say. Like, if it was just ctx.bind and they were all the same color, I couldn't register that in my mind. That bind is a function, a method call or function call. I couldn't register that. So that is super important to me. Cool. All right. So let's build a fake list of query results and send it on back. All right. So we're going to do a results equals query results. Again, a pointer. Okay. So then we're going to do a result list. This is how we set a, uh, a value of a field and go colon. And then we're going to do like, uh, let's, let's do some Twitch usernames here. All right. So we've got Definitely evil. Joker Dan. People are, this is the only thing that people are going to search for. Bobbing Baboon. We've got uh, Rocker Boo. Who else we got? Who else we got? Who else we got? Rocker Boo, Joker Dan, Isaiah. Even though Isaiah's gone, we're going to remember him. Him or her, them, my bad. Uh, Isaiah, we got Eric. Oh, look, I got spell check. Apparently, definitely evil is unknown, while bobbing baboon and rocker boo are known words. That's that's useless. Yeah, all right. So we got some chat folks. Uh, oh, yeah, rocker boo. The hover over thing is a passive tool. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I didn't know these terms. So it's a passive tool because you don't have to do anything, but it adds. You don't have to learn new things. That's what I got you. You don't have to learn anything new. It just happens. Got it. Maybe if I relied on the hover text, I see what you're saying now, Rocker Boo. Got you. Bobbing baboon. Rob Pike doesn't like syntax highlighting. Hey, to each their own. I can't. I can't work without it for for whatever reason. Maybe I would have to train myself, but I I just don't want to. I'm so much more productive. Uh, even most of the new editors have that tool. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, they do. I, I haven't ventured outside of VS Code for long enough that I can't, I, I don't really know any other editors well enough. I'm getting a little better at Visual Studio, but still like not quite, not, not even close actually to the level of here, but not quite to what I was at IntelliJ. Yeah, LSP does make it easier for sure. <laughs> Fallen Brethren, yeah. Yeah, we got some fallen brethren. Hopefully, we'll see all all them back. That'd be cool. Um, syntax high, definitely evil. Syntax highlighting, code forming, autocomplete are so important. I couldn't understand how one of my coworkers couldn't use or could use Salesforce's text editor to modify code. I was pulling out all my hair when I saw that. Yeah, I mean, if it's just a text editor, I'm too spoiled to go back to that. I can't. I just can't. It like boils, it, it, it like makes the hair stand up on my arm when I have to go back to that. 
Uh, Rocker Boot auto formatting now for everything. Yeah, I use Go. Go. Speaking of Rock Pipe, apparently Go FMT is Go Fumped when you do that. That's you should pronounce that Go Fumped. That's what he says. And this package is called Fumped. Apparently, apparently. So I I've gotten used to calling it Fumped to to fit in with all the cool gophers. Uh, definitely, uh, Joker Dan, definitely even the Salesforce console. It has sent time. I don't know what this Salesforce console thing is. <laughs> Eric, you blew begin mods mind when you told him that. That's funny. Xanus indent rainbow extension for VS Code. Well, let me add you first of all to the results list. Indent rainbow extension. Well, here we go. Here we go, folks. You nerd type, uh, you nerd snipe me, Xanos. So indent rainbow makes indentation easier to read. Oh yeah, I can do dots. Okay, okay. Colonizes or oh, colorizes the indentation in front of your text, alternating alternating four different colors on each step. Useful in writing code for Nim or Py. I can see that for Nim or Python. No squigglies. So do I have to re? Oh, I have to reload. Okay. Oh, very cool. I mean, that even helps with Go. Let's let's just be real, because like I don't, I don't look at the squigglies all that much. I mean, we do get that little highlighted line there, like that. But this is this is so much nicer than that. Zanus, you rule. Thank you so much. Oh, Eric Dev, another nerd snipe bracket pair colorizer two. Where have all of you been all my whole life? And then we've got, all right, let's check out bracket pair colorizer. Oh, do I need two? I need two. That's the one. Install locally. Okay. Reload required. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I got to have it. I got it now. Joker Dan, uh, definitely evil. Joker Dan, no, they weren't using the console. They were modifying the custom Apex class from navigating it through the custom through custom code. Do you all work for Salesforce? Because I don't know if anyone else knows. Maybe I'm just not familiar with Salesforce tech because I'm not. But yeah, I don't know. I, that, so are they modifying code to make it less useful for coding? Not sure. Not sure I get it. Rockaboo, I rock large tabs for sure. Where's my, I think I'm at, yeah, I'm at four spaces right now. Bracket pair colorizer, rad. I guess it's through the, oh, Joker Dan, I guess it's through the setup then. There doesn't have to be any, or there doesn't seem to be, there doesn't have to have any dev tooling. Yeah. Okay, Joker Dan, you, you use Salesforce as a dev. Salesforce is a huge CRM with its own backend language. I did not know that. That's crazy. It's a stripped down mixture of C Sharp and Java. It's odd at first, but it's easier to get familiar with. Oh, it has its own front end framework. Front end frameworks too. That's interesting. That's it. I, I have never. Oh, actually, I've heard of like Google had one, like Google Web Toolkit that had like a Java based front end web framework. And then it compiled stuff down to JavaScript. So I wonder if it's like that, maybe. <clears throat> So yeah, all right, I've got a colorful editor. This is awesome, I love this. Thank you all for the extensions. So, got a results, yeah, all right, we got a results list. Uh, I mean, <laughs> obviously, hopefully in the future, this is gonna be filled in with like real results after we make our API call to uh, the Bing results. But yeah, we've got some we've got some folks in here and we're gonna try to return this. So we've got ctx.json. This also doesn't say it needs to be a string, uh, a pointer, but it does. And then we've got our results. So we're gonna do that. And then also I noticed, where are we? We can do that. See, there's a second one that takes in an indent. So we can pretty print the thing if we call pr JSON pretty. Let's do pretty printing. And I will indent with two. I got called out for my tab size. I got called out for my tab size. So now I'm only doing two spaces. That's three. Oh, no, that's two. There we go. 
Uh, oh, yes, yeah, so definitely evil. I got certified as a Salesforce dev. I'm working towards my architect certs, but Apex is similar to Android dev. I was asked to pick it up. My coworker was basically modifying code to make changes without using an IDE. I got you. I got you. Hey, definitely evil. Congrats on getting certified, though. That's awesome. Hey, Syed, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Yeah, definitely evil. Congrats on that. Good luck on the architect certs, too. Like, uh, modifying code to make changes without an IDE, that's something I might do in like production when I'm being real bad. Joker Dan, I use... Hey, thanks for the follow, Zenus, too. I appreciate that. Uh, Joker Dan, it used to be templated like Angular. The new one is web components and more React-like. I'm on to that. I'm, that's cool. I should check this out. I should check this out for sure. Definitely evil. I'm personally okay with the more React format of web component. They're naturally e normally easier to maintain, modify, and validate functionality on. Yeah, man. Uh, functional, like it's a functional programming kind of mindset where you got these components and they compose together. I'm into that for sure. Joker Dan, I learned React years ago in like 2014, only started in Salesforce in 2018. I got you. Rocker Boo, colorize plus large tab seems overkill. My eyes are so bad. That is not for me. I mean, I've been getting along without it for a while, but I'll take any help I can get for sure. Joker Dan, it was all fairly familiar to me anyway, doing, due to having a shallow experience of tons of things. You know, I'm I'm kind of in that same boat for, for different tech because the more I know about something, if I take my assumptions into the other thing, like I'm trying to learn Rust as an example. If I take my assumptions into Rust, from go there's no way i'm learning rust because it's like like i don't know like here's how you make a list of things in go that's not at all how you do it in rust and like the underlying structure of these are called slices in go i call them lists but technically they're called slices the underlying structure of a slice in go has nothing to do with rust but i find myself bringing it over and being like oh this is how you do lists in in rust that's kind of like doing it in go but I got to rem remind myself, no, no, no. Like I shouldn't be thinking like that. I should be thinking this is a totally new thing. So I like to have, I like to just check all of my previous knowledge sort of at the door, learn the thing, and then bring some of that back to make the comparisons later. Rockaboo growing on you. Cool, cool. Eric, you're going to start setting up? All right, I'm going to be out in like a few minutes. Let me just get this thing running. Yeah, Joker Dan, I, I feel like you, you were trying to get rust up too. You got to throw everything out. Yeah, I feel like anybody, like even if you know hardcore C++ or something, rust, like the syntax is different. The everything is different. You should actually check out, uh, I got a coworker. Let me, it's uh, Ryan Levick. Is it uh, twitch.tv? Let me find it on the big screen here. Is it Ryan? Yeah, that's the one. Ryan underscore Levick. I'll put it in the chat too. He does tons of rush. Oh, there you go. Eric got it. He does rust, I think once a week, maybe twice. So uh, like he does super advanced stuff and he does simple stuff. If you tune in on the advanced stuff, you're going to like, I don't know, for me, it's like, psh, I, I get like, I get five minutes of knowledge or I get knowledge from about five minutes of stuff he does. But the beginner stuff Super good at teaching. He goes step by step and he talks slow too. So that's good. Rocker Boo, I feel like it's around GC versus non-GC for Go versus Rust. There's more to Rust though than the GC thing because that memory safety thing helps you with concurrency too. So like it'll, it's got that concept of ownership. It's like, oh, uh, this, this function owns this memory. This function is borrowing that memory, but this function can't borrow it because this function already did something like that. I'm not, I'm obviously not good at explaining these, these rust things. Um, but that helps with concurrency too, because it extends to like this thread and this thread can't both own it at the same time. Only one can. So that gets rid of those, those race conditions, those concurrency problems that you hit. Uh, Joker Dan, go or JS is my go-to for personal things. I want, I want rust to be in there too. Me too, for sure. I want Rust. Someone told me about Elixir earlier. I should get a new Elixir too. Because that Phoenix framework, crazy cool. Crazy cool. 
No underscore. Thank you, Eric.dev. Yeah, Ryan Levick, all one word. I love how you guys shout out all your coworkers. Yeah, I mean, my my coworkers, Eric, Ryan, B. Kettleson, Brian, he does streams too. I love their streams. So I, you know, I call out good, good streams. If y'all have other good streams, like Beganbot, he's, he's an awesome streamer too. I'll call him out any day of the week. Shout out to him. Shout out to Eric. Shout out to Brian. Shout out to Ryan. Shout out to Nina as well. She does Python stuff. Um, it's uh, Twitch. Meh. See, I'm used to my uh, keyboard mappings. Twitch.tv. N-N-J-A-I-O. I should put that in the chat. Twitch.tv. N-N-J-A-I-O. She does Python. Super cool at Python. She does Python coding. She does interviews with other Python, like prominent Python community people. He gives tips and tricks and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We work with some awesome people. And we just like, it's not just like at work. It's like in communities and stuff. All of you in this community, awesome people. It's all over the globe. Super cool. Definitely evil. Thanks. I've been the person that just learns all odds and ends for my companies. iOS, Android, React, Salesforce, C Sharp. You help out the main dev team. That's like you're an indispensable part of any organization that can do that. Like for sure. Eric.dev is live. All right. I'm going to go for like five more minutes max. I'm going to bounce and then I'm going to get over to his stream. So yeah, definitely evil. You are an indispensable part of your company. I bet. If you can do all those things at once, you can help anybody out. Boom. You're in Uh, like you're indispensable. At least if I was running that company, you would be indispensable. Thankfully, I can say the same statement. Yep, yep, yep. At some point, definitely evil. At some point, I want to spend more time with Go. I want to use it for my API for a new client on a server surveying tool. Hope this helps. I hope this stream helps. We're doing some API stuff here. Eric.dev, last miles, not a coworker, is amazing. You should follow. Oh, M- yeah, MD Layer too. I haven't watched last miles. I should. Uh, I'll make a note of that. MD Layers, also not a, MD Layer, not a coworker, does awesome ghost stuff. For sure. Check him out too. MD Layer. Um, I actually am going to go follow both of them too. I'll do it afterwards. Eric's dipping out. I'll see you there in a second. Uh, I'll see you soon there, Eric. Um, check them out for sure. Let me run this thing and then we're going to bounce. I will raid Eric's channel and, we're, and then I'm going to go over there too. All right. So we are going to run this thing. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to curl a thing with term equals. Oh, I'm just going to copy this straight up. Is this going to work? No match is found. That's because I need to do a, a HTTP. No match is found. Oh, wrong port. Duh. What port did I start on? 1323. Just needed a little three in there. No match is found. Still? What is no match is found even saying? Is it because I'm in the wrong directory? Weird. Can I curl something? Uh, Google. Okay, I can curl Google. Am I printing anything out? Oh, wow. We got another blackout. <laughs> Good old Windows. This maybe is this the end of my stream? Oh, wow. Am I back? I'm back. Good old Windows. We got another blackout. Sweet, sweet. Is the screen even back? The screen's not back. This might be a sign. This might be a sign of the end of the stream. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. All right. Yeah, let's try 127. Let's try 127. Yeah, Joker Dan, I got to figure out what's going on. This actually just started yesterday. I signed out at the end of the day. First thing that, ha- or last thing that happened before I signed out was that. It was a blackout. Super weird. I have no idea what's going on. I'm obviously going to have to figure it out though. So let's try that. 127001. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. 1323. Is this, maybe I need to open a new tab or something. Wow. 
Weird. Can I just do the straight up? Okay. So the server is accessible. All right. So we did something wrong with this. With this, I think. Slash API search. That's what it was. That's what it was. So we're not doing the query, st the query string stuff right. Something's up with that. Couldn't decode query string. All right. So there's like no matches found. Something is up with our query string. So we're going to call it today. We're going to call it for that. We're, <laughs> we're going to call it for today. Oh, I can't talk today. Yeah, we're going to call for today. I'm going to head out. I'm going to raid Eric's stream. Uh, and I'm going to head out to his stream. I'll be back on Monday at, what am I back on Monday at? Uh, 11 Pacific. I'm going to head out. I'm going to be back on Monday at 11 Pacific. Uh, we're going to do some more intro to go stuff. Uh, not, not web servers on Monday. Uh, intro to go stuff. I'm going to do it with a coworker. Those are fun too. Uh, if you want to join, join. Uh, if not, I'll be back on Friday doing this as well. So love to see you at either of those. It'd be super cool. Uh, Joker Dad, awesome to have you here. Uh, everyone else, awesome to have you here. Uh, hopefully see you next time. Uh, here we go. I'm going to raid Eric. Boom. Da, da, da. One minute, one minute, one minute. Da, 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 da. All right, here we go. See y'all.